for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. We have a lot on our plate today, so let's get started with the day's highlights. With President Park Geun-hye in Mexico right now, we look into ways that she hopes to partner up with the Latin American nation to boost bilateral economic ties. To boost job security and investment in the country's massive duty-free market, the Korean government scraps the five-year cap on duty-free licenses, extending the business period to 10 years. These stories and more coming right up. President Park is spending her second day in Mexico promoting Korean culture and content, and she's set to meet with her Mexican counterpart on Monday local time to talk about expanding bilateral economic ties, including a possible FTA between the two countries. Our Song ji is traveling with the president and follows this report from Mexico City. The 3,200 seats in Mexico's Metropolitan Theater are all taken by local fans of Korean culture. Korea's traditional song Arirang is remixed into a medley and co-performed by a contemporary Kugak orchestra and a local band. A dynamic Taekwondo demonstration excites athletes and fans in a country with 2 million practitioners. The fun reaches its peak with a performance by K-pop superstars, Infinite. After an hour filled with harmony, President Buck greeted the local audience in Spanish. <laughs> President Bach's cultural diplomacy also took her to Mexico's National Museum of Anthropology, where she appreciated the rich legacy of Aztec and Maya civilizations and vowed greater cooperation and exchanges between the two countries' museums. President Buck's focus will now shift to business as she sits down for summit talks on Monday with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. In an interview with Mexican newspaper El Universal, she said a free trade pact between the two countries will be a win-win for both and a much faster and efficient way to boost trade than the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Mexico is putting more priority in. Song ji Business Daily, Mexico City. Now, what's interesting about the president's visit to Mexico is that she's accompanied by the biggest business delegation of its kind, perhaps showing her determination to open up more opportunities for Korean companies in Mexico. Here's our Kim Min-ji with more. One of the motivating factors for President Park on its trip to Mexico, aside from political and cultural diplomacy, is the potential of the market. Mexico is the second largest market in Latin America after Brazil and known for its abundant mineral resources and relatively cheap labor. Its GDP currently stands at 1.2 trillion US dollars, growing 2.5 percent on year in 2015, and growth projected in the 4 percent range by 2018. More importantly, Mexico is part of multiple free trade deals, which could provide a bridge for Korean companies to cross into the Americas. Mexico is part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and a member of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Therefore, establishing production facilities in Mexico will make it easier to export to the U.S. On top of that, the Korean government sees ample opportunities in the market, as Mexico is pursuing large-scale investment in a national infrastructure project worth around $600 billion involving various sectors including energy, health and urban development. During summit talks with her Mexican counterpart, Enrique Peña Nieto, President Bach is expected to discuss ways to establish cooperation in new industries such as energy, healthcare, and cultural content. There will be growing demand for development in social overhead capital and energy sectors in Mexico. Korea can become a strong partner because it does not produce a drop of oil, yet has top-notch oil refining facilities. Korea and Mexico first established diplomatic ties in 1962 and became strategic partners in 2005. Mexico is Korea's largest trade partner in Latin America, with bilateral trade volume reaching roughly $14.4 billion last year. Kim min Business Daily. And in terms of trade, what fruit may the president's visit bear? Our Kim ji tells us more on the potential in the Latin American market. 
With the slowdown in China, Korea's largest trading partner, Seoul is turning toward new areas for growth, including markets in Latin America. Since the 2000s, Korea's trade with the region has been gradually increasing, amounting to 51.9 billion U.S. dollars in 2015, accounting for nearly 5 percent of Korea's total trade. Korea mainly exports automobiles, cosmetics and IT products, while importing commodities and raw materials from the region. With this in mind, Kwang Gi-su, a recent research fellow at the Korea Institute for International Economic Policy, head of its Americas team, says President Park Geun-hye's visit to Mexico may be an important step forward in further tapping into the Latin American market. Mexico is a gateway for Korean companies to enter into the American market due to its geographical position that connects it to Americas. But despite the region's high growth potential, the Korea-Mexico FTA has been up until now at a standstill, so President Park's visit to Mexico is expected to resolve some of the barriers for a bilateral FTA. Latin America is one of the fastest growing regions when it comes to investment from Korean companies, surpassing $4.5 billion last year. Korea signed a free trade agreement with Chile in 2002 and is looking to ink another FTA deal with Ecuador this year. Kim ji Business Daily. And to tell us more about last week and this week's stock market action, we have our markets reporter Che jin Suk from SBS CNBC joining us on the phone today. Hello, jin Suk. Good afternoon, Jim. All right, so let's get started by looking at the Korean stock market. Tell us about Friday's close and its overall performance last week. Mm -hmm. The Korean equity market showed a mixed picture on Friday. The Kospi fell by more than 1.1% to close at just above 1970, while the tech-weighted Costa was up by 0.3%, boosted mostly by biotechnology stocks. Weak economic data in Japan spooked the country's stock market, which re record, uh, recorded a 3.5% decline, the largest in one and a half months. Following a downgrade on China's credit rating outlook by Standard & Poor's, or S&P, overall investor sentiment among foreign investors in the Korean market took a hit as well. Foreigners who had bought shares in the Korean market since mid-February shifted their stance to sell over the previous two sessions of last week. The Kospi had been down for two consecutive sessions due to the sell-off by foreign investors as well. On a weekly basis, the Kospi fell by 0.5%, while the cost rose by more than 1.1%. Then how are the markets doing on the first trading day of this week? Yeah, the uh, Korean equity market showed low volatility on the first session of the week. The Kospi closed with a slight uptick, ending near its daily peak. Only individual investors were net buyers of the market, while the other two investor groups sold off shares. The Kospi rose by around 1% to close just shy of the 700 level. Along with low volatility, overall sentiment in the market has been muted recently as well. Korea's stock trading volume keeps plunging this year as investors remain hesitant given the ongoing uncertainties at home and abroad. According to Korea Exchange on Monday, the average daily trading volume of the benchmark Kospi and secondary tech-heavy Kostak in the first three months of this year was about $6.9 billion. US dollars. This is down over $140 million from the previous quarter. Compared to last July, when trading was most active, the daily trading volume was down nearly 30 percent. Then what are some of the global events that market participants should take note of this week? Global central bank policies are still plotted as major factors in the financial markets. This week, the minutes of the March Federal Open Market Committee, or the FOMC, will be released. Fed officials had decided to keep the interest rate, pointing out remaining global risks at last month's meeting. The result was interpreted to be dovish, leaning towards a continued accommodative stance by the Fed. Investors will definitely be keen on seeing what kinds of discussions were held during the meeting. The minutes will be released on Wednesday local time. And corporate earnings season will kick off both in the U.S. and Korea. So what are the expectations on that? 
Right. Korea's Q1 earnings season will officially kick off with Samsung Electronics' earnings guidance on Thursday. Expectations have been surging, helped mostly by robust sales of the company's new flagship smartphone, Galaxy S7, in March. Now, some experts even predict the company recorded more than $6 trillion won or $5.2 billion in operating profit last quarter. Since the earnings outlook of the largest company can potentially reflect the direction of the IT sector and the overall equity market as well, all eyes will be on those results. We're now one week away from the U.S. earnings season as well. An aluminum company, Alcoa, will release its quarterly result on April 11, followed by big banks throughout the week. According to a market research firm, FactSet, U.S. companies on the S&P index are expected to re- report negative growth in profits for four consecutive quarters, the first time since Q4 2008 through Q3 2009, largely due to low oil prices, a strong dollar, and sluggish global demand. This has been Choi jin from SBS CNBC. Meanwhile, the recent rally in global oil prices is losing steam, with questions hanging over whether major producers will be able to agree on a production freeze during an upcoming meeting. Our Huang Jie has the details. The surge in oil seen last month was short-lived after prices tumbled 4 percent on Friday. West Texas Intermediate fell below the $40 mark to $36.8 a barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange, marking the lowest settlement since mid-March. The fall came as comments by Deputy Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia fueled concerns about major oil producers failing to agree on limiting their output during a meeting between OPEC and non-OPEC members on April 17th. Prince Mohammed bin Salman said that his country will freeze output only if Iran and other major producers do so as well. While Iran is expected to attend the talks, Bloomberg has reported that the country is unlikely to join a production freeze as it gears up to sell more of its oil now that nuclear-related sanctions against the country have been lifted. Market analysts are keeping a close eye on what may come of the talks later this month as they believe the outcome will determine whether oil prices surge over $40 a barrel or plunge deeper. They say if major producers agree on a production cap and also signal additional cuts, prices will rise. Apart from Libya, members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries are set to gather in Doha along with Russia for the meeting. Hong Jie, Business Daily. Korea has the largest duty-free market in the world, posting growth of over 15 percent across the past decade. And to keep this momentum going, the government has announced a set of new regulations. Our Lee Ju-young tells us more. From 10 years to 5 and then back to 10. It's been a lot of flip-flopping from the Korean government on duty-free licenses, first cutting the decade-long permit into half in 2013, and this year saying it will reverse that decision once again. The Ministry of Strategy and Finance explained the change is to help the retail industry operate under more stable conditions while increasing job security for workers and encouraging operators to make bolder investments. Under the five-year system, duty-free operators had faced the difficult choice of investing millions of dollars, not knowing whether they would win a renewal in the coming years. But the new regulation offers an easier renewal process, with companies able to resume business as long as they meet minimum requirements. Along with the extension, the government has also decided to raise the commission rates for duty-free store operators as a means to increase social contributions made by the industry. If operators only had to pay 0.05 percent of their annual sales, under the revised rules, they will have to shoulder as much as 0.1 to 1 percent. The government says half of the additional sums collected from commission fees will be used to promote tourism. These changes come ahead of an upcoming decision by Korea Customs Service on whether to allow long-running players like Lotte Duty Free and SK Networks to continue operating their downtown stores in Seoul after losing their licenses to rival bidders under the five-year rule. But the sheer possibility of more competition in Seoul is alarming recent entrants to the market as they're already facing troubles of their own such as securing top-class luxury brands which are critical to attracting big spenders. Yi Ju-young, Business Daily.
All right, that brings us to the end. But we'll be back tomorrow with more, so don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.